Okay. Hey, and welcome back to another episode of the Girl Boss Method podcast. I'm your host, Richie Bra, and for today's episode, we've got another guest. Her name is Leah, and Leah is an artist and a photographer. So Leah, please introduce yourself and tell us what you do. Hi, my name is Leah Billy, and I do photography and art. I do... The, the type of style of art I do is contemporary, but mixed with abstract and animals and wildlife. I'm mainly inspired by emotions and the outdoors and everything positive. So, yeah, that's what I do. I absolutely love it. I love that, um, Leah, you've got some examples behind you. Um, yeah, I try. I actually... squeeze them in. <laughs> I've actually got examples on my walls. So guys, if you've ever wondered yes. <laughs> whose beautiful artwork this is that I have behind me, this is Leah's. Um, and the funny thing is, Leah yes. and I have, we've never <laughs> met in person, but we've um, exchanged lots of conversations over Instagram. Uh, we've spoken lots over the years. And I just thought it would be brilliant to have Leah on board because I know that Leah, as well as being you know, a female business owner like myself, you're very much into well-being, uh, health, fitness. And I just really want to know how that works for you and how you found exercising helps to boost your your confidence and your, you know, in, help your mindset as well as a female business owner. So can you sort of tell us a little bit about that, please? Yeah, no, I find exercising probably one of the most important things um, to really keep a balance whilst working. So for me, I'd say I normally have the better days when I start my day off by working out. It almost just helps me get my mind right, wake me up a bit <laughs> so I can actually be more productive. So, yeah, no, it's definitely very, very important to me. Um, the days that I forget to work out or I get up a bit too late to work out yeah it just it I don't know I just feel more in sync <laughs> when I get that workout done first thing early I'm all pumped up ready to go so Brilliant. yeah no it's definitely so do you, how do you fit it in though with your schedule because obviously you don't just run the one business you've got two businesses is that correct how do you make that fit in because yeah. quite often when I speak to ladies that are business owners they tell me how stretched they are for time mm -hmm. and they'll tell me they haven't got time to meal prep they haven't got time to think about meals they're often on the go ordering um on the go takeaways uh lunches out mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. yeah they, they I guess you could say they're kind of pouring from a very over full cup in that sense and yeah tell me yeah. a bit more about how how do you fit it in how do you find time um so for me it was I had to get to a point where I made it a priority and if I didn't have my health as a priority because there's been many times where I just worked all the way through until crazy hours um so, yeah, no, I had to make sure it was a priority. So being able to have it in that kind of space, I was able to say, okay, that's the first thing I'm going to do when I get up. Oh, is my internet unstable? Put mine. Oh, let's see. I, th I can hear you fine. I can, is it I cut out? It. Did it cut out? Can you hear no? me? No, no, it's all good. Um, All good. We Can, can you hear you. me, Richie? Sorry. <laughs> yes, yes, all good. Um, Yeah, continue. Oh. Is it all good? Okay. Yep, yep, yep. So for me, what I, yeah, so what I do is I start super early. That's the best thing for me. So doing the workout early, even with the food, that's, for me, I've always liked to cook my own food. I'm definitely the person that's like, yep, there's rice at home. <laughs> let's not, <laughs> let's not do the takeout because a lot of times I'll, I'll have takeout and I just don't feel great. My energy level is a lot lower and things like that so yeah no definitely being able to do it first thing in the morning I think also meal prep is great 
Yeah. That's a great, great skill, overcooking. So you've got enough for the next day, especially if you're going to be working a lot, being able to have like different meals to pull out of the fridge and, you know, have to eat instead of cooking fresh meals every day. Because I used to do that. I was like the person making bread once a week and everything. <laughs> so yeah, no, it's it's all about prep, preparation. Mm -hmm. And I think another key thing, what I've realized um, will be sleep. Sleep is so important. And you know, having your own business, a lot of times you end up staying up till 4 a.m. working. I've done it a million times. And then it means you're not getting up early enough to train. So it's, yeah, it's crazy. So I've been trying to get to bed earlier. And that's helped me a lot, to be honest. Yeah. Having a bit of a cap on the work time. So, I yeah. I can appreciate that massively, actually. I know uh, mm -hmm. many of our female listeners that are sort of you know career very career driven or business yeah. either business owners or just really stuck in with their work yes it can be really difficult to find that point when to say no and when to stop mm -hmm. and it takes discipline it takes yeah. discipline and if it's not and I'll be honest with you we've all done it right and I don't know if you can relate here but you say you're going to bed and oh. all of a sudden, that doom scroll on Instagram happens. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it yeah. sucks you in. So although yeah. you've gone into bed at the right time, you've mm -hmm. you've started scrolling. So um, one thing I do, actually, is I I put my phone on flight mode. I just Oh, that's great. I get rid of it and put it away. Um, yeah. I'll also share that I actually do have two phones because I have yeah. my business phone and my personal phone. And my personal oh. phone is really there for my family. I don't actually have any apps on my yeah. personal phone. I don't okay. use it very much. It's um more so like an emergency thing. So it's mm. like a, it just in case kind of number. So that that usually does stay by my bed because I, I've got like elderly grandparents. I mean, my, my parents are getting on a bit. They, they you know, they don't live far. I've yeah. got siblings and nephews and nieces. And it's just, I always like to know that I could be reachable. Yeah. If there is ever a situation or a scenario, life throws shit at you. Mm. Um, but yeah, my main phone um, that has all, you know, Instagram apps, everything goes flight mode. Yeah. I put it away and um, I never really saw the point of having two phones until I realized that actually sometimes we need to stay connected, but other times too much of it is a massive destruction uh distraction yeah. distraction <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah I guess another thing is how do you find working on like your physical activity uh -huh. how do you find that influencing your creative or artistic streak oh I like that um do you know what I think it's quite important because like with my photography a lot of times when I'm doing it, I feel like I'm doing a workout anyway. So I definitely feel like, um, you know, being able to do stretches in the morning. That's something I learned from you too, because I did have my injury. And Richie, she saved the day because I had an um, ankle injury. And I actually got that from doing long hours standing at Art Fest. And obviously long hours standing doing photography. So I had a bad injury. Rich who came through she just was like oh here's the plan you know she gave me all of the physiotherapy plan she was coaching me online and everything like that and yeah I was able to um, really identify that I needed to you know do stretches and stuff like that so no it definitely has a big impact on you know some of the things that I do yeah no definitely exactly and um I feel like being a photographer is mm -hmm. there's there's quite a few out there and whether they mm -hmm. are just you know lifestyle photography or mm -hmm. it's it's to do with branding and that sort of thing yeah. I've seen how physically demanding that job is yeah. um, it's really difficult and I was speaking to a lady the other day who's a branding branding and photography consultant and she was mm -hmm. telling me that her knees are really giving her a lot of issues at the moment so I just think yeah. as you've said 
you know, these small aches and pains and stuff, you know, if you don't yeah. pay attention to them, you don't stay on top of them, they yeah. become really detrimental and they can have a negative impact on, yeah. on your work. So yes. you know, that's, no, your, that's your career. And and um, if you don't look after your body, then it's, it's going to have an impact, unfortunately. Um, mm. So what about when it comes to like discipline? What do you find... Was obviously being disciplined with your stretches uh-huh. and disciplined with your physical activity and uh-huh, going uh-huh. to the gym and stuff like that. Do you feel like any of those have been transferable in terms of how you run your own business? Mm. Um, yeah, no, I think to be honest, having more structure is always beneficial to business. I think it's um, it's really important and it helps you just really keep it all in line and stick to your plans a lot better so I find when I'm able to you know stick to working out early and stuff like that I'm able to then stick to the rest of my plan for the day so it kind of gives me a better yeah it's a better structure for mm. the, for overall for business I would definitely say but when I'm not doing it as much it's like yeah you're not as disciplined so I might overwork I might stay up a bit later things like that so yeah yeah interesting definitely and so obviously with it giving you some like discipline would you Mm. also say that it kind of helps with that like work-life balance as well because yeah as well as pouring yourself into work you're actually Mm -hmm. learning and understanding how to kind of um do more for yourself really yeah yeah Yeah. um definitely yeah definitely yeah yeah yeah. So how did you get into um, artwork and like photography and everything? Tell me a little bit more about that. So I know we've kind of touched a little bit on the exercise and, and uh-huh, stuff, uh-huh. which has been really good, but it'd be really interesting to know what motivated you to take that step. Uh-huh. What were you doing before? Uh-huh. And um, yeah. How do you feel now that you've, you're, you're in it and, and you're achieving those goals? Oh gosh. Um so with the photography, I always like taking photos. I was always that person like tick, 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 mm-hmm. with my, you know, my old phone. <laughs> as soon as it had a camera, I was using it. <laughs> so no, um, my dad actually bought me a camera, a digital one. You know yeah. them little, you know the little um silver ones <laughs> from mm. back in the day. So he bought me one of those, and I used to just do videos and you know. Um, a lot of photos I'll do like little photo shoots of my friends at school I'll be like oh come around we use the white wall and I was all always super creative with those things doing fake music videos and stuff so yeah no I I started off doing that and then I met a lady Mm. so because I'm quite tall she was like oh my gosh you know I want you to come up yeah that was it it's like oh come and model for me (laughs) how tall are you I'm actually 5'11 wow I'm tall. I'm tall. beautiful <laughs> wow I'm so she was like oh my gosh I want you to come and model for me I'm a fashion designer mm. I'm gonna show you my stuff all this stuff I was like eh. and I come to be shy and so I was like no I, I don't I don't want to model but I do like taking photos mm. like do you know what okay she said okay yeah yeah let all right I'll let you take some photos of my stuff she's yeah. really cool lovely fashion designer called Mary Martin in London and yeah no she was like oh yeah take some photos and she liked what I was doing there was like quite creative shots and really quirky a lot of her clothes kind of um, resembled a bit of like David Bowie type you know that yeah Yeah, so they're really quirky quirky kind of stuff and and from then she was like oh my gosh you know what you should start start your business like I know you're you're 16 but wow you're really young yeah and I was like really she said yeah so she took me along to all these um music videos I'll do like behind the scenes and she'd be like yeah make sure you pay her properly and stuff so yeah that that was how I started um and I met also a guy that was friends with my dad his name is Simon Webb he's a huge photographer as well yes yeah he was able to sit me down and say you know, this is what you need to do. Yeah, need I've, to... I've heard of Simon. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. He's awesome. One of the first people to ever give me advice about photography. Incredible photographer. And so down to earth. And 
yeah, that was a blessing meeting him and him being able to, you know, tell me what to do from such a young age. Yeah. So from there, he was like, you've got a camera, you know how to shoot, just make sure you know how to, you know, edit. And he was mm -hmm. like, just go for it. So it was great having such encouragement at a young age because even at that time there actually wasn't as many photographers mm. because I think um, the accessibility to getting a camera it wasn't you know it wasn't so such you know it wasn't so Affordable, accessible I would say would you yeah say? it wasn't yeah. It, it wasn't yeah it we were really pricey and I, I think now we've got, we're yeah. in the age of phones so actually camera yeah. equipment has to arrival. Yeah. The iPhone and the yeah. Google Pixels and exactly all of that. So it's, yeah, it's a completely different time we're in now. But yeah, that's how I became a fashion photographer. Mm. And then all I've always painted. My granddad was an artist, so he yeah. always encouraged me. Yeah, he's awesome, so talented. Yeah. So yeah, I just there was a stage where I thought, do you know what? I love doing photography, and I worked in a school as well with special needs children. But I got to a point where I was like, you know what? I want to also do something for myself. Because obviously being a photographer, I, I love making people feel, you know, great about themselves and yeah. body positivity. I was, I, I've done a lot of that stuff. Um, But then I, I got to a point where I was like, okay, I'm doing a lot of client work. I love it. Mm. But I was like, but what do you like doing, Leah? Like, what makes you happy? What, you know, makes you feel more calm? What takes away all your stress? And I was like, painting so I just started doing it on the side and then yeah went on to start selling wow great. incredible <laughs> um because I've really seen your business grow actually yeah and you have you really yeah have. yeah definitely and um another thing because people won't know this but I'll say it anyway but uh <laughs> Leah, you come from a family of teachers though as well yeah yeah okay. yeah and um Leah's cousin is one of my very best friends. So yeah. that's another way that we kind <laughs> of connected and, and linked up really. And um, yeah, so that was just really interesting. And yeah, I, th I just think, yeah, I guess the next question, I did have something on my mind, my mind I was going to mention <laughs> there, but um, yeah, so. Hmm, what about advice to other women that are looking to start a business I think that's probably a good place to go next mm. I would say a key thing would be depending on what type of business you want to do mm. I would say not being scared to reach out and ask for help because even when I started I was very young and I think I could have asked for more help mm. than maybe I did so there was a lot of areas where I had to go through and learn on my own whereas mm -hmm. I feel like if you can learn from somebody else's mistakes you're going to save a lot of time so I think there's an importance in talking to people who do what you want to do and sometimes it's scary because yeah not everyone's going to help you I mean a lot of times you've got people who see you as competition when I started as a photographer a lot of phot photographers didn't talk to me like you could go to the pit and they're just like, oh, who are you? oh, what kind of camera you got? Oh, rubbish. And then they see your photos oh. and they're like, oh, oh, you're actually really good. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a bit of, yeah, it can, it can be scary to art someone. But if you find the right one, keep arts until you find the right person who's going to be able to say, yeah, I'll, I'll help you, you know. Because mm. there's mm. a lot of people who are willing. Like I said, there was, you know, I had two people who helped me. You know, they didn't have to. So yeah no I think the important thing is talking to people someone who already does what you want to do then I would say being able to actually learn from them as well um and then after that think about building a team as well because a lot of times we can do things on our own which mm. I'm guilty of I'm like oh you know just because you can do it all doesn't mean you have to do it all yeah yeah Exactly. So it's about being open to, okay, where can I get help? Mm. You know, who can I bring on my journey with me yeah. and help them as well? So that's another key thing I would definitely say. Yeah, I, I love that actually, because, do you know, listening to you there, that feels a lot like fitness. 
Yeah. Um, in some spaces you'll get, especially when you work in a gym, because I, mm -hmm. I have worked in gyms, mm -hmm. there is competition between personal trainers, whether yeah. it's a price war or a stealing, nabbing war. Yeah. It's pretty toxic and it's not, it's not everywhere. Not mm. everywhere is like that. And I've been in places where people would actually respectfully, they, you know, again, it all depends on what that gym um, spaces environment is like and what it's, what it's like from the top, what the, the, um, the managers are like, if you, if you like, and, mm. and how the team is set up in terms of working together as opposed to working against each other. And mm -hmm. when I've worked in places where, you know, I have been self-employed quite respectfully, you have had people and say, look, I know you used to train this person. Are you happy for me to train with them? Because they've now asked me and is that cool? And I think that's really like a really good place to go. Um, I also feel like we all have different expertise so in photography, there'll be different lines of work that you specialize in. And it's the same thing that comes with fitness. So even as personal trainers and nutritionists and online coaches and what have you, there's always going to be a way that you do things that your clientele are going to enjoy and, and they're going to like. You're going to do things differently than the other person. My yeah. partner is actually a personal trainer and uh, online coach as well. But yeah. we do we do things differently, not because I'm right and he's wrong or he's right and I'm wrong. Yeah. Nothing to do with that. It's just that we bring different things to the table. And well, he's a male and, and likely attracts more men or male clients coming after him to, you know, they, they want to change their, their lifestyle in a different way. And for me, I'm more about like connecting with females and helping them understand their bodies and female empowerment and and I think also that's another reason, like with the podcast, um, one reason also why I love to speak to other women in, in business or just even other women that are in the fitness space as well, is just allows us to create more connections. And yeah, I think that's what we need in life is more connection and less, Definitely. less of this sort of, you know, me versus you and you versus whatever. Exactly. It, it's not. It's not like it shouldn't be that thing of, you know, I'm better than you or <laughs> exactly. competition or anything like that. It should be, well, if we've got a purpose or a, or a vision, yeah. we should collectively be trying to push towards that. And yeah. there are plenty of people that need um, photography, your amazing photography mm -hmm. skills. And there are plenty of people that will purchase different types of artwork. Exactly. And it's the same thing. People yeah. want different things and, and like different things about fitness um people so yeah I think it's just all about trying to really share and and you know depending on what you believe in as well yeah. and then mm -hmm. working towards that together yeah so, yeah my little ramble there but yeah <laughs> really related to that, that is so yeah, yeah. no yeah. it's so it's so important and I, that is something I've learned because yeah you can work with in the industry and it can be so lonely and also it's like it doesn't have to be like that like when you're able to connect with other people you learn so much and you know mm -hmm. you can assist each other even yesterday I went to a it was like a networking kind of event with other artists mm -hmm. and it was lovely like I, I love meeting other artists I like seeing what they do hearing about their stories and stuff like that yeah no it's great <laughs> and it's something like you said we, we have to do more we have yeah. to shared a, a shared vision if you like yes um definitely. but yeah that's what I was going to ask was really you know if you were a part of a community and if you were part of a network of other people that um do what you uh -huh. do um because like with me and my girl boss method my clients yes. we have our own little community and I'm actually part of another community as well so I'm actually yeah. part of a network of um physiotherapists online uh -huh. fitness coaches nutritionists personal trainers yeah. um and it's just really nice to be able to talk about things with others yeah. on the yeah. same journey as you. And mm -hmm. the same goes for my clients to connect with one another and exactly. think about this. Although you have someone that's, you know, leading, maybe leading from the top or, or whatever, or mm -hmm. educating you or helping you with your mission, you've got these people on the same journey as you. Exactly. And I just think that mentorship, and mm -hmm. community go a massive way and it does we need more of that you know we do we do 
we yeah. definitely do no I love it I love it it's so important so so important it's even the theme of the so I'm working on an exhibition at the moment yeah and that is actually the theme so I love we're talking about that no way what tell yeah, me tell us so more about it in um October and it's yeah. literally all about people sharing their stories and the importance because you know you never know who you can inspire as well so it's mm -hmm. called the journey as well so, yeah it's so cool I'm going to be talking to all different people and then creating work based on their stories and then being able to share you know key instruments which each person so once like going through the exhibition you'll be able to go through those people's stories yeah and think about your own at the end so yeah I'm excited for that that should be oh, a lot of fun yeah, yeah. it's really good <laughs> um Leah, what else can we expect for you from you in 2024? What's like Ooh. what's your vision this year? Um, so it would definitely be meeting more people. I want to connect with more people. Mm. Getting the exhibition all ready for the end of the year, which I look forward to do. Um, creating more art, more pho photography, working on different projects, probably just trying to do as much as possible as a way. <laughs> But yeah, no, I think it's going to be a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Yeah, definitely. And um, I think it's always really good to have that vision as well. And is this the first podcast episode you've ever done? It is. I was meant to do one. See, this this comes to my organisation. <laughs> I was meant to do one last year. Okay, for yourself? Yeah, I didn't get to set do up. It. No, 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 it was with a different lady. She yeah. does a lot of um, well-being stuff. So okay. I was meant to talk about that, but didn't get to do it I was a little bit unorganized <laughs> oh, well hopefully this has been like um you know the the breaking into into this world as well and yeah. allow, allowing your brand as well to kind of reach further afield yeah because for those of you that are listening you won't be able to see Leah's artwork because this is this goes yeah. out in audio but <laughs> of for those of you watching on YouTube you will have seen Leah's beautiful work that she's got displayed on her side and I've got behind me unfortunately mine doesn't look like great because there's window glare. Fabulous. yeah window glare and, and lighting <laughs> and stuff like that so it's just looking oh, slightly oh. washed out um but yeah no I absolutely love it and um I've got this really nice piece that I bought a few years ago and yeah ages getting it up and putting it in the right frame but it's finally in the right frame <laughs> and it, is it called uh bees of love love is which one is it it's bees it's got a bee a couple of bees in it oh yeah no that oh. one is hearts of gold there you, got you the go pink one. yeah because you got one of the last limited edition prints right yeah and the one. yeah yeah hearts yeah. of gold yeah that's the one Heart, yep. I knew there was hearts I knew there was gold you did you said love so but there's bees in there so I was like bees <laughs> But I love it. I really do. I'm a fan of bees anyway. Yes, um, I know you are. You've got a whole bee theme, don't you? <laughs> yes, I do. Exactly. So where it. can people find you, Leah? So if yeah. people want to contact you, where's the best place to find you? The best place would be probably my website or Instagram. So okay. paintmarksonmyjeans.com or paintmarksonmyjeans.com. Instagram <laughs> on Instagram so that would be the best two ways you could email me drop me a DM I normally try and look through that any requests and stuff so yeah mm, definitely and I'll be sure to share your links at the okay. end of this uh recording so I'll leave Leah's um Instagram handle and a link to her website Leah it's been so nice to have you on board today um oh, I know that it's been a bit of, you know <laughs> been quite a, a quick one um but it's been really nice to kind of learn a little bit more about you, connect with you as well, and yeah. introduce everyone else to Leah as well, because hopefully we'll be, I'll keep it fingers crossed here or quiet, but hopefully <laughs> we'll be hearing more from Leah again in the future. Um, thank you for listening. If you'd like to find Leah, she's at Leah, no, she's at Paint Marks on My Jeans. Yeah, Paint Marks on My Jeans, yep. Yeah. And um I'm at Richie Bra on Instagram. This has been the Girl Boss Method, and we'll see you here next time.